What's up guys, it's RevJ again, and it is the week following Christmas. Ho, 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 motherfuckers. Which means you've undoubtedly probably already watched way too many unboxing videos. So I hate to put you through another one, but it's something that I think is pretty relevant to what we do here at RevJ HD. Um, as you guys know, I've invested in a lot of my camera gear over the last year of doing this, from just GoPros up to the T5i and some of the newer GoPros, uh, as well as incorporating some lighting and, and new audio rigs and stuff like that. And so this is something uh, that I was hoping to pick up for the holidays and I was lucky enough to go ahead and do, uh, and that is finally get a shoulder rig for the DSLR. So when we do the car show videos and some of the event stuff, uh, we can take the production to a slightly higher level. So I want to show you guys the unboxing and assembly of the new shoulder rig that I picked up. So here are the boxes and uh, it's kind of hard to start an unboxing video when there is no real labeled packaging. The crazy thing is I looked this up on Amazon a while ago. It had a bunch of good reviews. I ordered it, but I can't find any history of the order and I don't remember what the heck it's called. So it's kind of a mystery. And the fun part is looking through this there's no indication of what it's called. I know you can go on Amazon and eBay and find a lot of generic camera gear, but this almost takes the cake because there is little to no visible branding, actually no visible branding that I can see anywhere on the box. This just showed up in the Amazon box and it is two white boxes and that's it. Uh, no manual, no, uh, you know, uh, instruction booklet, nothing. This just two boxes sitting in there. This is the top of the box. Now, uh, this obviously mounts to the rail system, and there should probably be the blinds in here. Let's see. Yep. They seem decently made. Um, I don't know if this is something that needs to be super structurally sound because I've never had one before. Those fit onto here, uh, and let's see what else is in here. Oh, this is actually a metal bracket. So that's kind of nice. The hind the uh, the thumb screws are plastic, but the actual hardware is metal, and this whole thing is metal. This is plastic here, uh, regular black ABS. And let's see, this one here is the big one. Yep, that would be the big top flap. And the uh, the notches control position it fits in. I mean, there is definitely some flex. They're not super thick, um, you know, and I'm sure I bet if you left them in the sun, they could warp or something like that. So I do have um, all, you know, LED lighting. I'd be interested to see how something like this did under like hot lighting, if this would actually hold up. So that is the first box, and again, no branding, no markings anywhere on this thing, which I think is, is pretty funny. So let's set this to the side and go to the big box here. This is the heart of the unit, I imagine. A little piece of uh, cardboard there. So let's slide this open. All right, and a bunch of goodies in here. Um, starting on the top right away, I can see this. And I do know what this is. This is actually the shoulder pad. This is the ballast that goes on your shoulder uh, and holds the rear of the mount. Um, as you can see here, they've got a, a weight here that looks like it's removable. Let's see what I'll do. Let's screw this guy. Oh yeah. Now, I don't know why you'd want to remove it unless you had an extremely light camera, but because it's designed for DSLR, None of them are really gonna be that light. On this side here, you've got the beginning of the metal bracket and it is a threaded insert here. I imagine there is a tube or something in here we will fit into that. We'll find out in a second here. Uh, the rest of the case has got like a uh, kind of a rhino lined plastic coated underside here. And it's all, looks pretty nicely made. There's like a neoprene cover over the top. Um, Velcro closure here, hook and loop. So it, it actually looks pretty nice quality. Um, set that aside and see if we got the rest to build it in here. This, ah, uh, now this is cool. This is the actual focus follower unit or part of the focus follower unit uh, right here. And what this does is this will mount with this guy here, this ring around the lens. And then that gives me an interface right here uh, to have smooth precision control. See the gear drive there. Uh, precision control over the actual focusing. Again, it's got rail mounts. This is all metal. This is uh, anodized aluminum, it looks like, which is actually cool that there's not plastic. The rest of it's plastic. Um, the actual action of this, really, really smooth. That's really nice. Um, you know, blue coated on the outside here too. It's got thumb screws to uh, change the adjustment height, as well as the actual rails here on the bottom. 
So that's nice. Now, as I keep going, we hopefully should have everything to put it together. There's no packing list, so I have no idea. And again, I keep mentioning it, no branding anywhere. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the ring that goes around the lens. The rubber gear that you pull to fit and tighten the thumb screw, and that gives you an interface around the lens. Next thing we got here is some styrofoam wrapped. I bet these are the rails. Oh, these look pretty nice. They're just the little short rails for the actual, I guess you call it deck, top deck of the system. Uh, and they have little blue end caps. The actual uh, rails themselves are, looks like powder coated black. Um, you know, not that thin curtain rod material. They're a little thicker. They look to be of nice quality. Kind of hear how thick they are there. Um, the end caps are nice. Again, build quality seems really good, but no branding. We still have no idea. Aside from the fact that it's all blue and it matches, we don't know much about it. Haha, -ha, we have another rail uh, hiding here at the bottom. And this one is threaded. So that is what's going to interface into that shoulder pad I showed you guys. This, yeah is the actual um, mount, the actual uh, shoulder mount, shoulder rail. This thing is cool. These hand grips are like super, super thick uh, rubber. There's two different materials. This is like a slightly uh, rubberized ABS, and this is like an actual sticky, like, uh, tactile, you know, tactile gel, like on a, uh, on a, like a handle grip for a motorcycle or something, actually a little stickier than that, um, which is pretty cool. This is, again, that nice rail material. This is all metal, and all of these thumb screws are actually anodized aluminum also, which is really cool. They're not plastic like the other ones. All of these anodized aluminum, anodized aluminum, anodized aluminum. That's all awesome. Uh, Allen hardware on all of it looks to be pretty good quality. We've got... Again, the little uh, thumb screws here are all anodized aluminum. This whole plate um, is powder coated black. We've got the uh, the quarter 20 mount here at the bottom. Uh, let's turn it around here a little bit. This is what the other side of it looks like here. There's the top of the plate. Oh, there's nice little friction pads here uh, so the camera doesn't move around. You've got a little bit of adjustment in terms of where the rail system itself goes with these. These, again, all adjust. This whole thing can move. Each individual hand grip uh, can adjust here at the top to move in and out. So I'm actually rather impressed with the build quality of this thing. And this is not light. This has got some serious girth to it. Um, so let me set the box aside here and let's see if we can finish putting this thing together and uh, give you guys a demo of how the DSLR sits on there and shoots with it. So we got everything in front of us here. Uh, boxes on the left, main unit here is in the middle. We got our rails, the ring, uh, the shoulder mount way over here on the right and the focus follower here up at the top. I'm gonna take a wild guess because there's no instructions. Uh, still no branding, no instructions, none of this. It's nice quality, but frankly, if I can't find my Amazon receipt, I'm not gonna be able to tell you who the heck it's from. Uh, and I ordered it on a friend's Prime account, so I definitely can't look up the history. I mean, I'd have to actually call my friend, and who wants to fucking do that? So, uh, I am guess I'm gonna start here, take the long rail, and insert it into the uh, same threading here on the, ha on the shoulder mount. And that makes that one piece. Kind of set that back over here. Um, that was the only real obvious part. I guess I'm gonna move on to the main unit itself. Those guys loose. And then, there we go. I should be able to rotate this unit around the actual center. Uh, that is more like how it should sit here. Now you can see there are two holes here. Those, uh, are, I take a wild guess and say those are for the rails, so I'll loosen both of those thumb screws up. Again, the build quality on this seems pretty nice, and I'm sorry if I can't keep this thing super still. Uh, I'm looking through the viewfinder on my camera trying to assemble this, which is not the easiest way to do it. So, how the heck do I get it attached to my shoulder? Well, I'm guessing that is what this part is for here, this separate little thing. Again, thumb screw city. Um, we can move this over. There is another uh, rod attachment here. Again, there's adjustability for that. This shoulder mount uh, fits into that, so... We've got it all basically together here. The shoulder mount is in the back. This rod connects it to the main frame here via this mount, which I should actually tighten up here to get it to stay in place. Uh, and then this unit 
is completely separate and that's where the camera mounts. Now, this box is optional. You don't have to install it on there, but if you want to, uh, that's what you can use these rails for. Now, obviously, I left out this rather important detail, the focus follower. That, again, goes on the rails. <laughs> We still need to put the actual ring on the lens here and the camera in the unit, but before I do that, I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at how it looks all assembled with the camera off of it. All right, guys, as you can tell, we've switched over to the GoPro here. Hello. And uh, we've got the mount in front of us. Uh, the GoPro lens does afford us one nicety, and that is the fact that you can kind of see the whole thing here uh, from tip to tail. It doesn't do quite as good job of capturing the light, but hopefully you guys uh, should still be able to see here. I've got the T5i with my light and my Rode microphone attached to it sitting over here, which I'm actually still recording the audio from because it's far, far, far superior. So we're gonna mount this thing up on the rail here. Now I don't know right away if I'll have to take my accessories off to make this work, uh, but we'll find out kind of as we mount it here. So, and I warn you, the audio is about to change because I'm gonna be moving the camera with the mic in all sorts of different directions. Uh, sorry, deal with it. Let's go ahead and mount this thing from the start leaving everything attached and see if I can fit it that way. I'm gonna take the quarter 20 from the bottom here and uh, actually I'm gonna slide this all the way forward so everything's kind of out of the way. I'm gonna loosen both of these up, pull the whole thing forward here, and then with all the extra room, uh, use this and mount it to the quarter turn or the quarter 20 uh, mount in the actual pad here. Uh, anyway, so I've got it basically mounted there, and that actually went pretty easy. It uses the standard quarter 20 that's in the bottom of uh, most camera gear here. And uh, move it a little bit. The road mic clears pretty well. Now it does kind of, uh, it would fit behind the actual flap here if I have the box fully assembled and open all the way, but it looks like I can fold it back and clear it. Yep. Uh, so when it's out of the way, it shouldn't interfere with the mic too much. I'm probably going to think about relocating the mic uh, to a more forward and out of the way position on the actual mount here, but let's get the rest of it set up before I make that decision. We can go ahead and install this ring I showed you guys earlier. The ring again just loosens up, fits around the outside of the lens here. That'll let us adjust the focus follower around the lens as necessary. Okay, so I've got the focus follower ring installed. Uh, all it needs to do is grip the actual focus ring on the lens here, uh, and you're good to go. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of having a good fit and getting it snugly on there. That then lets me adjust this, the actual focus follower itself, uh, right up to the ring. So let's go ahead and get that adjusted. Okay, so we have it installed. Uh, there you go, the focus ring is on. This now controls the movement of that focus ring. As you can see, it hits a little bit on the actual overhang of the focus here, uh, and the, the adjuster itself can hit uh, on the other side. So I've got to look at uh, what I need to do to make adjustments on that. I don't know if it's just a matter of changing uh, some heights around or if I actually am supposed to trim that thing. I'm not exactly sure. But again, the action itself is extremely smooth. Uh, looking through the focus of my camera, it seems to adjust it pretty accurately uh, and pretty comfortably here. Uh, and then all that's left to do is actually adjust the uh, main shoulder rod in terms of how far in or out it needs to go to your shoulder and if you need to offset it left or right for your camera. So I'm going to turn uh, the GoPro here just a little bit. We're going to see if we can't set it up on my shoulder and then I'll start seeing some test footage with the camera. Alright, so I've got the camera rig on my shoulder here. 
Gonna make some adjustments to the side here uh, on the uh, adjustment screws in and out to my shoulder. I can do it left to right to change my offset a little bit here. Uh, I can also make changes uh, in the way the actual forward and down sits here, as well as use the focus follower itself here. And if you're watching the video side from the DSLR, uh, it works pretty well. Now, this top I'll fold back. You can see I've got my light up here on top. Yikes, that's bright. Uh, as well as my road mug here on the side. It is really a pretty formidable shoulder setup, guys. Uh, you can see this how big this thing is here in the mirror. Um, definitely fairly intimidating, definitely professional looking, which is nice. If you're going for that, uh, this thing really provides a pretty uh, impressive, sizable uh, shoulder mount here. With my uh, LCD viewfinder open, it's pretty easy to read. The distance is okay, not perfect. They do make a little cup that fits over that to put it to your eye. Uh, so you can really get in there. I don't have that yet. I'm thinking I'm probably going to get it now that I see how this just sits on my shoulder. It's fairly comfortable. The weight is pretty neutrally balanced. Um, I wouldn't mind adding some more weight to the ballast, which they do let you do. Uh, if you recall at the very beginning when I showed you that mount that unscrews, you can change the amount of weight that is on that and you can add more weights to it. It doesn't come with the set, but you can get them. Um, overall, I'm really happy with the way it fits. It's not super lightweight or anything, but it makes the camera extremely stable here for uh, kind of panning, uh, for going up and down here. And again, I can adjust the mounts uh, forward if I need it pitched and I want to be doing a lot of filming down uh, or filming up, etc. So pretty cool. Uh, that's it, guys. I just wanted to do an unboxing and show you how this thing works. You're going to see this thing used a lot more in the upcoming RevJ videos, a lot of the things we do for the studio days, uh, as well as the film, event filming and stuff like that. So that's it for now. Focus follower. Yay, it works. Uh, we will see you next time. Oh, it probably helps if I get back into focus. We will see you next time on RevJ HD. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I'm shining so fucking bright, I need some damn shades fit. That inferno that is burning through your fam.